My name is Chad Wilbanks, and I'm the Strategic Director for Training and Technology at the Water Tower. Wastewater treatment is essentially taking really dirty water and making it as clean as possible. That's it. Just kidding. I can get a little bit more detail than that. So for wastewater treatment, um, one of the biggest things that, that we face with wastewater treatment is you have anything and everything. If it can fit in a manhole, if it can fit in the collection system, it can make it to a plant. So I've seen all kinds of things coming into the headworks of a treatment plant. Um, actually saw some furniture that was like, it was like the outside, like wrought iron furniture, and that literally destroyed a grinder at one of our pump stations. It was, it was horrible, but I don't know how the chair or whatever it was made it into the system, but it got in there and it destroyed one of our grinders. So essentially what we have to do is we have to use a plethora of treatment um, processes to take whatever kind of nasty water we get from drains, from toilets, from kitchens, from showers, from whatever. We got to take that water and we got to treat it somehow. Um, but anytime you have a treatment process, when you have a system that removes one thing and water passes through, you'll have byproducts. And so then you have to do something with the byproduct. So back to the treatment process. So every wastewater treatment process, every plant that I've ever been around, been in contact with, one of the first things they have is screening. That screening is there to remove all those big things, the rocks, the boulders, whatever, footballs, whatever makes it in there, it removes it out of the process. The first reason why we wanna do that is because obviously trying to pump a football or a rock or whatever else is going to destroy your pump. But then second, we have to worry about capacity. So we have plants that are designed for certain flows. So let's say for instance, the F Wayne Hill um, Water Reclamation Center. It's designed to treat 60 million gallons per day. So you've got different parts of the plant where you have tanks, like at your bioreactors. Those tanks only hold certain amounts of water. So if you fill those tanks up with anything other than the water you're trying to treat, then you're losing your capacity. So that's why we remove the grit and the sand as well as all the big stuff, just because it's not good for the equipment, but then also for the capacity. Um, if you think about it, just to kind of give you a visual, if you had a, a 12 ounce clear plastic cup and you filled it up with water, it's gonna have about 12 ounces plus or minus whatever the tolerance is. If you filled it halfway up full of sand, then you're gonna have less than 12 ounces because half of that's going to be sand. So that's the capacity that I'm talking about. So essentially we remove all the stuff that is not of any use to us in the, in the treatment process. And then we start going through, um, some plants have primary clarifiers, some don't. Um, but essentially you have some kind of settling that takes place. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to remove any of, let any of the other solids that are not going to be beneficial to you for your actual treatment process get those out of the way and pretty much just get your water ready for the treatment phase so as you go through your biological treatment phase depending on the setup there's many different ways that you can have a bioreactor set up um, you could use the barden foe process modified uh, mle a to o various different types of processes that i could I could go to at length talking about, but I won't because I want to keep this brief. But essentially, um, biologically, you're trying to nitrify, denitrify, and in some cases, even biologically remove phosphorus. So um, nitrogen, ammonia, and phosphorus, those are nutrients that are naturally occurring. They're in our wastewater that comes into the plant automatically. We need to remove these because especially your ammonia and phosphorus, if we let those go out through the treatment plant and go into our lakes and our streams, that is what pollutes the lakes and the streams. Um, you actually can have algae blooms um, build up, eutrophication will occur, then all of the oxygen is essentially sucked out of whatever stream or lake that it happens in. And then fish die and it stinks and it's nasty. It's a public health concern. So ultimately, one of the largest things that we're here to do is to remove those um, nutrients so that they're at a low enough level, so the concentrations going back into the receiving streams 
aren't going to have any adverse effects. Um, and then also removing solids. Um, so we get the solids out and then we get the nutrients to a good level and that's pretty much it, right? So biologically we do as much as we can and then we go into um, typically a secondary clarification system. So it settles out in a big tank um, by gravity. Your clear water goes over the top, your solids settle out to the bottom where some of it is returned back to the basin just to kind of keep your bioreactors fresh, keep that treatment process fresh. But then you have a portion of it that actually gets wasted out. So you essentially push it out of the plant um, through your solids handling portion and send it to a landfill. So the clear water leaving the secondary clarifiers, it goes to uh, some type of filtration. There's all many different types, sand filters, uh, membrane filtration, but essentially um, you filter it. And by filtering it, you're getting the rest of those kind of minute solids, the solids that you really can't see sometimes with your eye, um, the ones that don't settle out, the dissolved, the ones that may be floating, you can filter those out and get the water to a more enhanced level. Okay, so like secondary clarifiers, essentially we have the plant splitting off, right? So I, I mentioned the solids go into one area and I mentioned the clear water going to another. So clear water gets filtered and gets disinfected and then it's ready to be returned to a receiving stream. Now the solids, they have to be conditioned, um, many times thickened and then stored and then processed. There's many different ways to process solids. Um, the most common two that are around are centrifuges and belt presses, gravity belt presses. Essentially what you're doing there is you're dewatering it. You're either through centrifugal force in a centrifuge, kind of like what your washing machine does in the spin cycle. You're essentially spinning the solids and getting the water out or you're pressing it in a filter, in a belt filter press. But we're trying to get as much water out as we can because the solids that leave the plant typically go to a landfill. And so we want to have them as dry as possible for loading and everything, but also it helps us in our, in our hauling costs ultimately. Um, our plant's designed to treat and process water. It's not designed to make solids disappear. So the water is our job, the solids is their job. So essentially you want to keep as much of the water at the plant as possible and let them do the job with the solids. So solids are processed, they're dried, they go to the landfill. And then, like I said, your clear water has already been filtered, disinfected, and it's on its way to a stream or a river. Now, I do want to add, that's pretty much the process. You can have it as basic and as small as 100,000 gallons per day, or you can have it as large as, you know, a million, a um, hundred million. I mean, you can just, you know, depending on the area that you're serving, essentially, you just add more process units, you know, more pieces to the puzzle, and you have a bigger plant. But there's, there's extra processes that can come in play from time to time. So I mentioned the F. Wayne Hill Water Resources Center. In the case of that facility, there's actually the Ostera process. So one of the issues with um, ammonia and phosphorus and the different nutrients, not only on the receiving stream, is sometimes you can have them build up inside your plant. And when you have nutrients build up inside of a pipe, then you have really big problems. And that was one of the things that was occurring there. So with the Ostera process, they were able to pull out that phosphorus, which is one of the uh, nutrients causing issues, and utilize it in a different side stream process that essentially turns it into a fertilizer aid that can be sold and, and used. So basically that process allows us to take something that was costing money and causing issues and turn it into something that's actually beneficial and potentially could even get a return on investment. I always encourage people to educate yourself, whether it be, you know, talking to someone. Um, obviously, you can reach out to the water tower, get in touch with any of us, and we can definitely point you in the right direction and help you out with anything. Um, contacting your local municipality. Many, many folks like me that are just super passionate about wastewater treatment or water treatment or pump stations or whatever the case may be that are more than willing to give a tour or to, you know, spend a few minutes to talk to you and ed educate you and let you know exactly what uh what we do highly uh encourage you to talk to your kids about it talk to mom and dad kids if you have questions about it um do a local tour um contact the water tower but keep yourself educated and talk to others so that we can spread the word of 
not only what a great resource having water treatment is, but also what a necessity it is for our world and our future. 